Hello, everybody. Um, we're very excited to be here. We can actually see some familiar names, but if you're actually new to both Blue's Wireless or Ubirat, let me say welcome, and it's an honor for us to be here with you today. So basically, if you are an avid maker, developer, or just an IoT entrepreneur, and you love easy things that are both uh, easy but scalable, this is the right place for you. And of course, if you love Stellar and beautiful dashboards. So right now we're here with Blue's Wireless and Ubidabs. So uh, allow me to introduce myself. Um, I'm Christina, I'm Business Development and Partners Manager, Manager at Ubidabs. So Blue's is definitely one of the most exciting partnerships we've been carrying out this year, uh, both because we love the product and we love the team behind. So I'm also here with David. Yeah. Hi everybody, my name is David. Um, the customer success lead at Ubidots, and I'm really happy to be here. Um, to be honest, I enjoy preparing this webinar. Uh, I already told, told Rob and the Blues team how awesome the product, product is, so I hope you enjoy it just as I did. Um, and we're here with Rob. Um, Rob, do you want to introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, hi everybody. Muted. Christina, did you have another slide, or should I start presenting mine? We have another slide. Okay. We just well, want... anyway, <laughs> hello everyone. I'm Rob Lauer. Um, I'm a developer relations lead at Blues Wireless, and I'm super happy to be here with you all. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. Okay, folks. So this is our agenda. We're going to take around 45 minutes. So first, we're going to carry out a Ubidat intro, very quick. Then Rob is going to continue with the Blues product overview, and then we're going to show you a real world project that we carried out it's very cool and of course q a so feel free to drop your questions we want to make this a conversation so thanks again for being here so starting with uh Ubidat's introduction in case you are not familiar with Ubidat's yet um we uh, we are an iot application enablement platform and we basically provide a whole set of backend and front-end tools from device-friendly APIs to a very clean UI to end users. We offer a whole set of tools for IoT entrepreneurs, system integrators, or OEMs to be able to develop and launch entire IoT solutions without the need to hire a software development team, spend thousands of dollars, or even worse, time to market. Um, so since, we, since we've launched in 2014, we've been on a mission to enable the data-driven future today. So we basically have a two-tier approach where uh, first we offer Ubidat STEM. This is our free license. Is uh, we have three three devices. It's basically meant for non-commercial products or academy. So academia. So for instance, you want to brew your own beer at home, or you're studying at I don't know a PhD. We have a bunch of cases here, and more than 100,000 developers that have worked with us so far. Um, on the other side, we have our commercial deployments, where we basically provide our licenses that are meant to fit any IoT project out there, whether you're prototyping or scaling, it starts at $49, then it goes to $199, where you can basically offer a whole customized platform under a white label. But it's not about the sales. If you're curious, just visit ubidabs.com slash pricing. And we're basically convinced about the infinite creative power out there of people solving local problems using global tools, and that's why we are here for. So with no further ado, I'm going to pass it on to Rob, and he's going to give us a brief overview and about Blue's product as well. All right. Just had to make sure I was properly unmuted and my slides were showing. So uh, hello, everybody, again, and uh, thanks for that introduction, Christina. So again, my name is Rob Lauer. I'm the developer relations lead at Blue's Wireless, and I really wanted to start off my segment here by kind of overtly emphasizing the developer focus of Blue's Wireless. And while I can't speak for UbiDots directly, my experience with them has been very similar in terms of the tech stack and developer nature. And I don't know about y'all, but this really means something to me. Like everything we do from engineering through marketing is really focused on solving real world problems with authentic solutions. So for Blues, this really starts with this problem of you know, network connectivity, specifically cellular IoT connectivity today. Uh, very common situation, right? You're gathering device data, you need a means of delivering that data to the cloud. So the first question is, you know, likely why cellular? Well, it's a great question because there are, you know, there's numerous perfectly valid connectivity options for your IoT projects today. 
You've got Wi-Fi modules you can use. You've got wired Ethernet, LoRa, other LPWAN technologies, even uh, BLE or Bluetooth. And then you have cellular. And of course, each of these options has its pros and cons, right? Like Wi-Fi has amazing availability indoors, but relatively heavy power consumption for the modules. Wired Ethernet, you know, like Wi-Fi, you know, high bandwidth, low latency is fantastic. Certainly not mobile. LoRa is fantastic for that uh, kind of low power and wide area when it's available. Uh, BLE, great for device to device communication, but reliability, you know, it's kind of sketchy. Connections aren't, aren't super reliable with BLE. Uh, simple, similar to LoRa, Sigfox has that kind of low power, high range niche nailed, but again, availability is not so great. Then you have cellular, you know, amazing global coverage. It's ubiquitous, but it's not great for high bandwidth or low latency needs, especially in IoT scenarios. So you kind of look at all these and you blur your eyes a bit and there's no clear, obvious winner. It really all depends on your own individual requirements or your project's requirements. But I'm here to propose that maybe it's not so much a zero sum or either or kind of situation. And I should emphasize, if you're satisfied with your current connection method, that's great, keep using it. But maybe, just maybe, there are some scenarios where cellular provides more value than you might realize. So what kind of stands out to me as the most useful scenarios for cellular are these things like global connectivity. You know, if your solution is on the move, like maybe it's something like asset tracking. And I really like to think about vaccine shipments, which not only need location-based tracking, but really active temperature and humidity and maybe even fall detection you can't do this kind of active tracking without a global cellular network. There's also power independence, so a power independent network. So if your solution monitors some critically important function, maybe it's fire, smoke, carbon monoxide, security, any of those, what happens when the power goes out? Does your solution just stop reporting? Well, cellular of course is ideal because it isn't dependent upon local networking hardware to be active. If your solution is battery powered, so is your network connection. Data security, you know, when done right, your data doesn't even need to traverse across the internet, it can go directly from carrier to your cloud provider. Uh, cellular is incredibly robust and reliable, so it can also act as a great backup connectivity option as well. However, uh, to date, you know, developers have been really afraid of cellular. Businesses have been afraid of cellular for, for some different reasons. Developers, of course, are afraid of having to use these archaic modem AT commands. Kind of feels like you're writing in assembly at times, frankly. Or maybe the opposite problem. They lose all control and are subject to the host hardware's abstraction. Now, businesses, on the other hand, they're afraid for more monetary reasons. Like, say you buy 200 devices with 200 unique data plans. On day one, the meter starts running, and you're paying however much per month forever, regardless of the stage of your product, whether you're just experimenting, or maybe you're prototyping, or you're deploying in the field. So this is all really where the note card from Blues Wireless comes in. And putting my developer hat on, I'm really excited about what we're doing to help make cellular a more viable choice. So case in point, the note card is a cellular and GPS enabled device to cloud data pump. It's a tiny system on module, like literally 30 millimeters by 34 millimeters, I believe, and ships ready to embed in a project via that M2 edge connector. But to make things much easier for you, we also provide a series of note card host expansion boards called note carriers. Now, there's different models of the note carrier depending on the microcontroller or single board computer you're using. Finally, the note card comes pre-configured to securely communicate with NoteHub. This is a Blues Wireless service that enables this secure device to cloud data flow. Now, note cards are assigned to a project in NoteHub, which then syncs data in those projects for routing to your cloud of choice. So I like to think that NoteCard is both business and developer friendly. $49 one-time cost per device. That does include 500 megs of data and 10 years of cell service. And yes, you can top up your data as needed. Uh, more importantly though, you're using the microcontroller or single board computers you're already invested in. We support STM32, ESP32 boards, Adafruit Feather, Raspberry Pi, you name it. And connecting to your cloud application of choice is practically turnkey. We have a variety of tutorials available if you're curious about some examples of connecting your note card data to your own cloud application. 
And again, the developer nature, developer focused nature of Blue is you know, you're programming your note card with requests and responses in JSON. So here is an example of an event or a note as we call them that's sending some recorded sensor data to the cloud. In this case, just a temperature reading. We also have open source libraries for Python, Arduino, C, and C++. Okay, so you have this event or this note full of data that's ready to be sent to the cloud. Now you're probably gonna end up in one of four camps. Now the data you have on the note card, all you wanna do is log that in NoteHub and that's it, end of story. As you'll see in a little bit here, you can go into NoteHub, you can browse that data, you can export it to CSV or JSON for offline processing. You know, that, that is an option. For most of us though, the data in that note or in those events needs to be routed to a third-party cloud application. This is handled by something called routes in NoteHub. A route can be configured to simply take that note and handle all the boring background noise and, and tasks and deliver it to your cloud of choice. So maybe that cloud is AWS, maybe it's Azure, or like today it's a data visualization solution like UbiDots. Maybe it's multiple clouds even. Related to number two is maybe your note needs to be routed to that cloud application, but the data needs to be kind of massaged or transformed first. So NoteHub allows you to transform your JSON data using JSONata before being delivered to your cloud app. Finally, maybe your use case is a little more complicated. Maybe multiple events need to be combined into one note, or maybe there's a third party API you wanna to hit to add data to a note before it gets saved in your cloud app. Whatever it may be, NoteCard also has a put or has multiple put, post, and get APIs that allow you to fully customize how, when, where, what gets delivered to NoteHub. So on that note, what I'd like to do is show off some note card features for you today. So that's it for slides. So let me stop showing my screen for a second here and go through the awkward uh, transition here. Um, what, I'm, what I have here here with me today here is the note card and I'm gonna hold it up here so you can kind of see what's going on. Now this happens to be our global note card that works on NB-IoT and LTEM networks. It's hosted, so the note card is right in the middle here. It's hosted on the Note Carrier A, which is a very flexible Note Carrier host. It's got built-in cellular and GPS antennas. On the side here, there's a variety of jumper connectors, makes it a great board for prototyping. Uh, we have connectors for solar and LiPo batteries as well. And there's actually a slot for an additional SIM. You don't need this as there's an embedded SIM on the note card for you, but we do have customers who like to switch between the embedded SIM and a the SIM they provide depending on their um, you know, geolocation in the world. So again, what I'm gonna show is a pretty bare bones demo. I'm not, obviously I'm not hooked up to a host microcontroller or single board computer, obviously. Um, however, where, what gets a little cooler is you probably noticed this USB cable. Um, so you can actually connect your uh, computer to the note carrier directly and communicate with it via a serial terminal. And it just so happens that if you head to dev.blues.io, we have a web serial terminal available for you to use. Okay, so this is dev.blues.io. Um, and if I connect to my device here, you'll see, let me expand my window a little bit. So here's our in-browser terminal. So again, no local installations of any tools required here. Now, the first thing I wanna do is issue just a simple command, all JSON. So the command is gonna be a request and it's gonna use the card.version API. So all JSON in, all JSON back out. What this simply does, this just proves out I'm actually literally connected to my board. This gives me the firmware version on the board, some other metadata, the device ID and such. Just wanted to prove that I'm actually connected to the board. Now, recall that NoteHub is that cloud service for managing note card data. Uh, prior to this demo, I created a project in NoteHub that I'll show off in a minute, but I do wanna initialize my project on this note card by issuing what's called a hub.set request. And now I'm gonna copy and paste because I don't trust my typing skills live. Now, if you look closely here, you'll see this hub.set is the API we're hitting. And then I'm sending a product here. And this is the unique, the globally unique product ID for my project in NoteHub. So it's gonna associate that project with this note card. And I'm gonna put the card in continuous mode. Continuous means maintain a continuous cellular connection. Great for demos, great for wired 
um, scenarios as well. Not so great if you're on battery power, which is why we also provide a, um, a separate mode called periodic that you can use to be a little more power sipping. So I issue the request and what's returned is an empty JSON object. That means it was a successful request. So now that I have my project all set up, first thing I'm gonna do is probably add some data to NoteHub. So what I can do is I use the note.add API. So I'm gonna submit a note.add request, and in the body of that request is the, any data I wanna send, so anything in a key value pair. Again, in this scenario, I'm just sending some temperature data, some mocked up temperature data, obviously. I'm also optionally specifying a sync equal true parameter. What this will do is it'll tell my note card to immediately sync this with the cloud. Again, this is great for demos and again, wired scenarios with continuous cellular connections. But if you're in, in a battery mode or in periodic mode rather running on battery, you don't necessarily want to do this as it'll you know, chew into your battery a little bit more. So I submitted the, the uh, note add request and you can see what was returned is that one note was synced with um, NoteHub, which is awesome. Now let's add a few more notes here, but I'm gonna remove that sync parameter and let's just throw a few more in here. So there's one and here's another reading. And you can see that total is increasing. So there's notes that are being stored on the note card. And to sync those with the cloud or with NoteHub manually, I can issue a hub.sync request. So this is gonna say, grab all those accumulated notes on the note card, shoot them up to NoteHub. So you can probably imagine pretty quickly here, you're using Raspberry Pi or whatever microcontroller you're using, you're writing uh, MicroPython or whatever language you're using, creating notes based on some sensor data and using these exact same commands, using the Python or Arduino library that we provide, but of course with a simpler Fluent API. So I've got all this data going to NoteHub. So let me pop over to my NoteHub projects. Now, what you, first thing you'll notice about NoteHub is that everything is project-based. So these are all my test projects I've created already. Each project can have one or more devices associated with it. There's even the capability to manage fleets of devices. So let me pop into my webinar project. First thing you see are the devices that have been connected historically. Uh, here's the device that we just are using right now. So you can see just 30 seconds ago, it was last seen. And if I go to the events window, we can see all these notes that we just created. So these have been synced with the cloud. Now I can filter out some of the other noise that comes with these um, cellular sessions to see only the data that I submitted. So it all looks pretty good there. We can dive into some uh, event details to see metadata about the note, uh, information when it was captured, the location of the cell tower that was used, the body of the note, which of course is exactly what we sent it, and the full JSON with all the metadata attached to the note. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, there's so much more that can be done in NoteHub. There's capabilities like um, OTA firmware updates for both the host microcontroller and note card as well. Um, but I do wanna show a couple of the features that I think are really nice to have. There is this member panel as well that provides for role-based access to your project. So you can provision access to your project to other users. There are also really what I think is one of the more underutilized uh, features of NoteHub and that are these environment variables. So these environment variables uh, can be device specific, fleet specific or project specific. So imagine you wanna set some kind of key value pair to an individual device to identify it in some unique way. Maybe you know set a, th a specific sensor threshold on that device. You can use environment variables for this or I mean anything else you can dream up. But what's important to today is routing my data to a cloud application. So I think at this point, I'd like to hand it back over to David to show some more uh, real world examples of how UbiDots enables this creation of really engaging cloud dashboards. So I'm going to pass it back to you, David. Yep, I'm here, attentive. <laughs> okay. All right, should we go? Let me select black screen and uh, here we go. Awesome. So before I jump into the routing process uh, that we're going to take over here, I just would like to point out that uh, it's been like two weeks since, since I met you guys, like personally, 
um, and I read your docs and I understand their products. So I want everybody to know that if you go through their um, documentation, you'll find this really, really easy to understand. And I, I, I can't believe that you just took like 20 minutes to explain all the things I read in three hours. So that means uh, your product is, is, is so well done. So with no further ado, what we're going to do right now is simply go over the route integration, which is simply creating a webhook. Um, let me just make sure I'm here. Yeah, an HTTP webhook that will take the data coming from the node card, then to Blue's node hub, wrapping up that in a compatible JSON using JSON data that I will show you how that works. And finally, we'll go to Widows. So it's really easy. I believe it's really simple. And let me just show you how that works. So yes, this is really simple. Uh, we are going to, to be using, of course, Node Hub. Uh, the guys at Blues share a project with me called Simple, Simply Partner Showcase. If I click on it, I will see some devices. One of it uh, is this one, the, I don't remember which one. Let me see if, if, if this is sending data, I believe it's sending. Let's go to events, as Rob tell, tell, told us. Yeah, this one is sending humidity and temperature every five minutes. So our goal is to take this data, parse it, parse it into an Ubitus compatible JSON and see it within our, within our platform. How can we do that? We go to routes. As you can see, there are already two in place that I used to test before this webinar, but I'm going to create one from scratch. It's really simple. Add a route here, and then we go to webinar, to name it, webinar test. And as Rob said before, I'm also terrible at typing live, so I just prepared myself to have all these things in my clipboard. So I'm going to place the blues URL in this field. You'll see that it matches our API that you can visit at docs.ubidots.com. Uh, you'll see there how to send data, and we basically simply use our URL and point something really important. You can access this dynamic key called device, and it would take the unique global uh, device EUI uh, from Blues and use it within Ubidos as the API label. So you don't need to think about naming or labeling your devices within Ubidos. Simply take uh, this from, from Blues and the job will be done by them. Then we will select uh, all fleets. That means all devices within the project. We will select all nodes. No, we don't want that. We actually want select nodes. And in this case, uh, the node I'm looking for, it's called sensor.qo. That means the file that is being sent from the node car to node hub, and it has that JSON I told you before, which is simply um, temperature and humidity. So I'm going to type that here. I'll have it, sensor.qo. And next, something really cool that I just learned a couple of weeks ago, and is the transformation portion. We will use something called JSON data that allows us to take the native blues JSON and convert it into a new with us compatible one. So I'm going to select here JSON at expression. And before I go to, uh, to the expression, I will show you how this works and what can be done with this. I have a couple of examples here. I'm going to expand. So this is the native JSON provided by Blues. As you can see, it has a lot of data. In the body key, I'm going to select it so you guys can see it really easily. Uh, this is the data coming from the device, right? And we need to take that along with this key, the when key, which tell us the time sum of the data and make it into a Nubidus compatible JSON. That looks just like this one. There you go. You have all the variables, the, 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 the respective values, and the time sum in milliseconds. As a matter of fact, this data I'm showing you right now is from another project that we will present to you just in a couple of minutes. Um, and you can get really creative with the JSON and expressions. Uh, Sack, a developer from, from Blues, uh, made this app, which I 
need to be honest, I don't understand. This is a JSON, a really complex JSON R expression that simply takes that data coming from the device and parses it into a numerous compatible one. You see that there are functions um, that simply operate once the data is not hub. In this case, I don't know what it's doing, but it does and it converts everything to a numerous compatible JSON. Um, moreover, you can find all the docs about JSON ARA here in docs.jsonara.org. It's really simple, it's really easy to use and really easy to, to, to read. Okay, so if we go back to our route configuration, we'll need to turn the native JSON from, from loose and convert it into a new Windows one. And how we do that? Simply pasting that. We will have two variables that are going to be labeled as temperature and humidity, and we will take the values from the body that I showed you before. Let's just um, see that again. It's here. Exactly. So we will take the, the, the values from the body. This is coming from the note card and put it into our JSON R expression. So body that temp and body that humidity and of course the time sum. As you can see, it allows us to multiply the, the time sum variable, which is when, uh, to convert it into milliseconds. Uh, it happens that Blue's API uh, gives that to us in seconds, but the, the Ubidos API receives that in milliseconds. So it's a quick uh, multiplication. And we are just basically ready to go. Once I save this, all the data, again, coming from the note card, will be sent to our Ubidos account. So yeah, we are ready. As this takes about five minutes, the device is reporting that every five minutes, I'm just going to jump into Ubidos and show you how it works and how it looks. Uh, as I have this one already working. So let me go to Ubi Dots. We go directly to the device that is reporting in that, this data. And as you can see, if I reload the page, because it says, it says the last activity was like an hour ago, and I know that's not true. So just a couple of seconds. And yes, the last data was received five minutes ago. If I go into it, I will be able to just see the plot that we've been receiving data in the last, I think, two weeks. So you can simply go here, aggregate data if you want it. So average every 30 minutes. And it will take some, some, some time to compute. And there you have it. But more importantly, you will be able to create dashboards. And that's something we are going to see just in a minute. I'm going to pass over again to, to Rob, he's going to explain us uh, the error day project they've been working for the past few months. We have also that data in Ubidos and we took the opportunity to build an awesome dashboard that will be presented to you at the end. Just as, um, uh, as a way to, 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 show, to, to showcase how Ubidos can help you build IoT applications without the need of coding or a lot of budget and, and going to market really quickly. So let me just stop my screen and I give it up to Rob again. Excellent. Thank you, David. So what I did want to show off here really quickly, um, you know, of course, we all know last week was Earth Day and to to help, um, you know, kind of celebrate Earth Day, our own Zach Fields put together this fantastic stream research project. You can find the full details of the project on Hackster, so at hackster.io. If you browse under Featured Projects, you'll see it. What Zach is doing here is really awesome. So he's taking numerous water quality sensor readings with all sorts of different sensors. He put them in this one watertight um, you know, orange box here, and he's measuring water quality in this stream before it reaches his town and then after it leaves town. So this is gonna help him measure the town's impact on water quality directly. So it's a really awesome citizen science project. And I wanted to highlight the project as I think it's one of the best examples we have of using multiple sensors. And you can see there's a lot of hardware involved in this project, but using those multiple sensors in a remote setting while also delivering live data over cellular uh, to NodeHub and to UbiDots. Um, 
what I'd like to do actually is is show off, David. If I'm not going to steal your thunder here, show off the the dashboard that that Zach has created. If that's cool with you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'll show you all the other <laughs> dashboard. That's okay. Just continue. So what what Zach has done here is used all these widgets, these like you know out of the box, literally widgets from UbiDots to create a variety of different visualizations for the all the sensor data that he's returning. So something as simple as like a geolocation for the one location of the, the sensor box, uh, water temperature here, pH level, you know, things I don't even understand, uh, turbidity, dissolved oxygen levels, and I've seen this go up and down pretty dramatically, um, down to some more standard, you know, line graphs here. It's really cool what you're able to do in, I mean, a matter of minutes really when this data is coming through in near real time almost as well. I mean, the other day when I was testing this out, I mean, I can get data from a local note card device to show up in UbiDots in a matter of seconds. I mean, it's it's really that fast, which is pretty amazing. Um, but I can pass it back over to you all here. Thank you. Okay, there we go. So we took that data from the AirTake project that uh, Zach built uh, the past few months, which I believe is an awesome project because it gives real-time data about the waterway um, of a town close to his home. So it's really nice to monitor that and just uh, be socially conscious about the water streams. So as you can see in my presentation, um, I took the idea of the dashboard they already built and used a little bit more of with these tools to create awesome dashboards. And that's what you're seeing in the screen. What I'm going to do right now is actually switch over to Ubidos and show you how you can build an application real quickly uh, for your end users uh, in a white label fashion. So if I just go out from here, and this is what I want to show you. As you can see here, uh, we, are, we are at uh, industrial.ubidos.com. That's what we call the application development side of Ubidos. Um, here is where you build everything to your end users, and then you give access to them with certain role of permissions that allows them to access their data. So as we like to call ourselves, uh, we are an application builder or maybe a business enablement platform from the IoT space. Now, if we move to how this looks from the application, your application, and, and, and let's just remember that it's a white label application, here we have and if, uh, everything is changed uh, from the nav bar. You have a new logo. All the colors uh, are inherited in the application. And more importantly, we have something called roles. In this case, this user has all the permissions to um, build, edit, delete widgets, or create new resources within his account. Um, but ideally, with the user management module, you, you can um limit or, or scope that access to the resources that you are assigning to the user um at the end i just wanted to show you that we are able to build clean and neat dashboard that shows data easily so people can understand it we have all the data coming from the air node project just as uh, rob showed us before but just with a little tweak to the dashboard to show how this can be really really beautiful at the end yeah, we have just a Q&A session. Oh, actually, we have a call to action. Just give me one sec. I'm going to present my screen back, and Chris is going to give us that, that options. Yep. Awesome, David. OK, so if you're wondering how to get started with UbiDots, if you haven't yet, so first, it's very easy with UbiDots and Wireless, this wireless of course. Uh, you can create a free trial anytime, and you have a free 30 days. And after you've done this, we have five, we have fifty dollars in USD in dollars for uh, your account in credits. And if you're actually willing to deploy the solutions in the market, we have a seventy-five percent off for the professional plan, in order for you to do your white label. So this is a very nice, um, just some coupons we're offering, and it's very easy. Just reach out to partners at Ubidot and happy to apply the discounts if you're a new user. Um, so yeah, that was basically like uh, what we want to show you. Um, and now we should uh, be jumping into questions.
questions. Um, yes, yeah, so we got some questions to go through. Um, I wanted to let everybody know too right now that within the next day or so, you'll get a follow-up email with a list of all the resources we provided along with the appropriate discount codes from from both Blues um, and uh, UbiDots. I I'm gonna paste into the chat window here the uh, discount code that you can use yep. on the Blues Wireless store as well. So that'll be in the email as well, but I wanna make sure you all had access to it. Um, one common question we get uh, on the Blues Wireless side is about global cellular connectivity, what that really means. Um, we do maintain, we actively maintain a list of supported countries that are available in our documentation. I will dig up that that link for you. I should have had that ready. Um, but we we do have active cellular support in um, through AT and T and its its partners around the world. So um, yeah, when we say global, we do mean truly global um, cellular mm -hmm. support there. Um, so I think what I can do is go through some of these questions here. I don't know if we'll have time for all of them. Um, one of the first mm -hmm. questions we got was about uh, using other IoT cellular offerings, and there's limitations depending on the, the carrier once you leave like urban or suburban areas. Um, so the solution that this person saw has, involves an eSIM that that looks for the best signal across multiple carriers, which is totally valid. I know we've all been in that scenario before. Um, the the answer I can provide today from from Blues is that we don't have anything at this time. Uh, we are on AT and T's network. But we're certainly always looking to evaluate our coverage and carrier network partners over time. Uh, we, of course, want to make sure that all of our customers have the best coverage possible. So um, if you're in this scenario where um, AT&T is not a good option, uh, at least in the US or, or whatever partner provider is being used um, in other places in the world, definitely feel free to shoot us an email. Um, I'll paste my email address in the chat window here as well. We always want to hear from you all about that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Ubinet's related question. This is an interesting one. So and I don't yeah. really know the exact answer to this, but can we get data from Ubinet's and send it over to NoteHub? So kind of the opposite of what we've just been showing. Awesome. I don't know who asked that, but I'm really happy um, you asked it. Um, and, the, and, and, and the answer is yes. You can use our events module to just simply trigger an, uh, an alert of the type webhook, which is basically an HTTP request. And with that, you can hit uh, Blue's API and just wait until your device syncs. And when when that's happened, you will get the data downlink to your device. As a matter of fact, this is something I, I, I asked Brandon and Zach and, and Rob a couple of weeks ago, how can I do that? And I'm sure we can send you all the documentation. This is something I will work next week to just include it uh, within our Blue's article in our help center. Uh, so yeah, people know how to do this. Just really easily from movie this, and it's possible. Cool. Uh, another good question, a common question, I probably should have mentioned in my slides, is that what about the power consumption of the note card and Blues Wireless, the Blues Wireless note card rather? Um, we have, if you look in our uh, uh, developer documentation at dev.blues.io, we have full data sheets for the note cards that talk about power consumption. Um, when they're idling, they can consume as little as eight microamps, um, uh, it, but of course, depending on whether or not it's connecting to cellular, sending notes, the, the, it'll fluctuate beyond that. But we really have designed it as a low power device from day one. Um, let's see. This question about navigating through different devices in the same dashboard. Um, that's- I think that's related? Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, that's something we didn't show because of the time, but if you allow me uh, just two minutes, I will go through something called dynamic dashboard. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, so let's just stop this While you're doing that, I'm, I'm going to answer one quick question. Somebody's asking about sending a recording of the webinar, and yeah, we'll send out a, a link to the YouTube recording uh, in about a day. Okay. Awesome. So, uh, for the person that Oh, am I sharing on my screen? Just give me one second. Yes. I want to make sure. Yeah, okay, this is working. Um, the dashboard uh, we show you today is a static dashboard, which is always fixed to a variable or always fixed to a set of 
uh, a set of variables or, or a device, right? But there are a type of dashboard called dynamic dashboards. So if you flag this option, dynamic dashboard, you will see how this works. I'm just uh, doing this really quickly. Default device, I'm going to select um, this one, which is the Airtape project. And what you're going to see right now is another option here. You have a device dropdown. So you will build your all of your widgets uh, of the dynam dynamic tab. And once you select the, the device you want to see data from, you simply select it here and the widgets and the whole dashboard will automatically populate with that device data. You don't need to create uh, a device per dashboard, a static dashboard per device um, to see the data of your devices. You simply create a dynamic one. They all should have the same structure and I mean the variables. And once you select it, it will change automatically to that device. I hope that that answers the question. And if you have any more, or need any further clarification as to this, we are open in our support channel found at support.ubi.com. Okay, you have, you have more questions? Yeah, there's a few more here. Um, one I'd like to bring on, so we have, uh, Brandon Satram's been lurking on the line here. He is my, my supervisor and director of developer experience at Blues Wireless. There's a question for you, Brandon, that I think you can speak more intelligently to. Uh, could you talk more about using the note card for pushing or note hub it should be using note hub for pushing ota firmware updates to the microcontroller great question can you hear me rob yep all right great hey everybody yeah thanks for joining today uh that's a fantastic question we provide in note hub the ability to update two types of firmware one is the actual firmware that's running on the stm32 control microcontroller on the note card uh, but we also do provide the ability to do OTA or firmware updates of your host uh, MCU uh, firmware. Now, the, the important thing to understand here is because we allow you to bring your own MCU or your own single board computer, there's not really a generic uh, way in which to do that that covers every single board. But we do provide a set of APIs that are documented in our dev site that give you the ability to do that device firmware update uh, or DFU. Uh, using the note card. And the way that the process works is that you upload a piece of firmware into NoteHub, and then you uh, NoteHub will notify the note card that the firmware is ready to go. And then you call uh, a set of DFU APIs on the note card to actually get that firmware binary. And then it's up to you on the host side to update it in place. And we have examples today for doing that in both uh, the STM32 family of microcontrollers and an ESP32. Uh, they both follow different approaches, so the samples are a little bit different. Uh, but and we can provide a link in the docs of where you can do that with the SP32 today. And if you have any other questions, or if you're working with an MCU that's not either of those, you can feel free to reach out to us over email, and we can provide a bit more guidance. But a great question. Cool. Thank you. Uh, just a couple more questions here. Someone is asking how long it took to take to put together the dashboard we saw on the UbiDot side. Um, I don't think, so Zach Fields is the guy on our team that put together the dashboard. Um, I can't speak to literally how long it took um, for him, but I can guarantee you it wasn't very long. I mean, my experience with UbiDots is it's like click, click, click around and you've got some really awesome looking widgets, but there's a lot of customizations you can do. Uh, I, I'm willing to bet that he did not spend more than about an hour putting together that that dashboard. Nope. Is that, you can, you, you all can speak to that more intelligently probably. Yeah, yeah, actually, uh, why not be honest here? We built it yesterday as a way actually to test ourselves and how we know the platform. We actually look, like to do those, those exercises. And yeah, it took us like 45 minutes. We selected the colors we, we, we wanted to show. And from that point forward, it was just clicking, clicking, copy, pasting, and that's it. Once you, you, you get the idea about how building dashboard works, uh, it's really, really straight, straightforward. Yeah, and fun. I'm fine. Yeah. Um, one more question here before we stop. Um, can either sure. UbiDots or NoteHub send an alert via SMS or email, for instance, if a threshold is exceeded? That's another great question. Um, I can speak right. to the Blue's wireless side. Like we we provide, we actually have a tutorial for this for using Twilio MMS to send um, to send uh, text messages, and I've done that myself, and it works really well. So uh, the answer from NoteHub is yes. I don't know about UbiDots. 
Yes. Awesome. The answer from Ubidos is also yes. Uh, you can find that here in our module uh, called data and then events. And I'm just going to take a minute. And it's basically uh, what I'm going to show you right now is the different types of alerts that you can create within Ubidos. So we are going to select a random variable, say dissolve oxygen raw. Here, if it's equal to 10, then the alert will be will be triggered. And then in the action section, you will be able to create these ones. Uh, send email, send SMS, telegram, voice call, set a variable within Ubi dots, uh, send a, a, a message to a certain Slack channel, trigger a webhook. This is actually the way we are going to work with, with the Node Hub API to trigger data from Ubi dots to the Node Cut. And then there are other options here. Right, it's really simple to to fill out. So if you are sending an email, you just enter here the addresses uh, separated by comma, and you are able to set the subject and the message and access access some variables that we call bookmarks that relate to the value variable and device that triggered the event. So that's fully customizable, and you can also have something called back to normal action. Once the, the, the condition you set on the if trigger section goes back to normal, then you get another alert. That's optional, and you also can fill it up with a subject and a message, right? So really simple, and it's available. You'll have you'll find a help center article in our in our in our help center that, yeah, that will tell you through um, this. As a matter of fact, this can also be white labeled as well as your emails. Mm -hmm. So if you're actually offering this as your own IoT platform, just so that you know that you can actually send it with your brand as well as the emails. We have a bunch of events such as a Sapier integration with more than 2,000 apps to connect your UbiDots ecosystem. So you'll be connecting Blue's Wireless, UbiDots, and all your deployment to like an mm -hmm. infinite amount of possibilities out there. So that was a great question. Thank you. Well, I think that's it for the questions. I, I apologize if I missed any because the questions window we're working with in GoToWebinar is pretty tiny and there's a lot of scrolling involved. I did yeah. post, paste a link to my email address. If anybody has any follow-up questions uh, about anything with Blues Wireless with NoCard or NoteHub, um, and I think they've already, uh, yeah, you've been provided with support resources on the UbiDots side as well. Yeah, from our end, uh, just enjoy this time and we would like you to yeah feel free to reach out whenever you want uh you can find the e our emails in the last the slide david uh, david or david i'm sorry i'm from from colombia that <laughs> uh, ubidots.com and christina the same and if you need support uh it would be great if you can reach out to support at ubidots.com uh, exactly we is... do all these integrations and partnerships thinking about you mm -hmm. so we love feedback questions uh projects anything we'll we'll be happy to walk you through, showcase them, and put them in our social media as well. So we'd be more than excited and happy to receive any feedback from any of you out there. And thank you so much, Rob. For, this was very exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we enjoy it. You all. You enjoy it. All right, bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a nice one.